Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romances with sweet and adorable and caring cinnamon roll heroes. I know that the alpha hero type is a fan favorite amongst people, but I love me a sweet, caring cinnamon roll man. I am obsessed with them because like that's what I want in real life. So it translates to books really well. Don't get me wrong. I love me a good alpha man. I kind of like a combo, but my heart is very much with the cinnamon roll men. So let's get into these books. I have 10 recommendations today and I also have a previous rec video. If you want even more recommendations, I'll link that down below. And I will also be linking down below all the books that I talk about today. So if any of them interest you, you can go click the links down below. They're all labeled and whatnot. The first one that I have is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. Rake is our cinnamon roll hero in here and ooh, he is so caring and sweet. He's an Aussie, he's from Australia. He's on a business trip to America and he has this one night with chaotic brained Lizzie. I love Lizzie, she has ADHD and she fully embraces herself and her personality, like she loves herself. There are those moments obviously where she is feeling self-deprecating because like anyone who is neurodivergent or has a chronic illness or disability, whatever the case may be, whatever, something that makes them different. Yes, you love yourself, you fully embrace yourself, but you also have those vulnerable moments where you're not 100% comfortable in your own skin. And so like, I really related to Lizzie in that way. I don't have ADHD, but like I really related to her and her thought process with everything and her confidence and all that jazz. But anyway, we're gonna be talking about Rake in here. So they have this one night situation and um, Lizzie finds out she's pregnant, um, but she knows that Rake lives in Australia. Like he was just in America on a business trip. And so she ends up calling him up and telling him like, um, I'm pregnant and it's your baby. Just want to let you know I'm having the baby. You don't have to like take part in it. I just want to let you know. He's like, I'm coming to America. And she's like, oh, you're coming to visit? She's like, he's like, no, I'm moving to America because um, I'm going to help you with this baby. The two of them are having to move in together now because he wants to be close to her and to the baby. And they end up actually falling in love through all this. It reminds me of Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young for sure. Um, but I love this one. Rake, like I love how he literally dropped everything, everything to be with Lizzie and this baby. Ugh, I, I'm obsessed with him. Another sweetest can be hero is Vigo from Only and Forever by Chloe Lisa. This is the last book in her Bergman Brothers series. I love Vigo so much. Okay, so this is the last book. So all the other books in the series, Vigo has kind of had a little bit of a hand in some of their relationships getting together. But at the beginning of the story, you can see that he's kind of sad. He's like, when is it going to be my turn? When am I going to find the love of my life? Where is my person? And there enters Tallulah. <laughs> um, they have a little bit of a past. They actually did like one semester of college together. They were in the same class, but um, she kind of gave him the cold shoulder and he is just a ray of sunshine to everybody. So he's kind of like, why isn't this woman liking me? What is going on? What did I do? Anyway, that was years ago. Nowadays, Vigo is opening up a bookstore. He loves romance books, um, specifically historical romance novels. And um, he wants to open a bookshop and um, he kind of makes this deal with Tallulah who is struggling right now with writer's block. She's a thriller writer. And he's like, I will help you with your thriller novel, help you with it if you help me with the bookstore. And so she ends up like living with him in the apartment attached to the bookstore um, and helping him run it and everything because he doesn't have the money to really pay for his staff right now. And he ends up helping her with her novel. The way this man just becomes absolutely obsessed with Tallulah, what he does, the lengths he goes to make her feel appreciated and seen and loved. Oh, I'm in love with this man. I love how sweet and caring he is and how passionate he is about romance books because same. Mm -hmm. Another contemporary romance is Love Light Farms by BK Borison. I know this is more so of a Christmas e romance, um, but I read this like earlier this year, not during Christmas time, and I had a grand old time. It doesn't really have anything to focus on Christmas, but it does take place on a Christmas tree farm. Take by that what you will. I know some people only really like reading Christmassy books during the Christmas season. This is a fake dating romance between two best friends named Stella and Luca. So Stella runs this Christmas tree farm and she really wants to, to get more into the public, be more publicized. And so she enters this competition where you kind of have to like write a summary about your your farm and to make it more like appealing and more romantic, she says, she says that she runs it with her either boyfriend or fiance, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but her farm ends up getting picked to be highlighted on a certain social media page. And she's like, oh crap. They're gonna expect me to have a boyfriend or fiance or whatever, and I don't have one. And so she asks Luca to fake date her while this person is coming onto their farm and interviewing them and whatnot. But then obviously through their fake dating, they realize like they've always been in love with each other, which is really sweet. Luca, oh, he is such a sweet bean. I love him so much. He's so caring and kind. 
And like you can tell like he definitely puts their friendship before anything else, which I really appreciated, especially in a friends to lovers romance because sometimes the guy just becomes too pushy or whatnot and that's not what Luca is at all. Next I have Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This is an MM romance. Our two heroes end up meeting one night at a, I think like dance club, even though our broodier all black hero like doesn't really wanna be there. He's there very reluctantly, but then this other guy, sorry, I forget their names. Um, this other guy, who has like this horrible like orange spray tan on like is wearing these like glittery clothes like lures him onto the dance floor and finally makes him laugh for the first time in forever and it's their romance like it's so cute this like sunshiny hero makes our broody one smile oh right okay so our broody one is ash and our flashy loud one is Darian. So Darian is very much our cinnamon roll hero and he will do anything for Ash, like absolutely anything. And he's always checking in with him, asking how he is. He knows that Ash is going through some mental health things. Um, and so he just wants to be there for everything and anything. If you want like an immersive novella, I definitely recommend Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone. This is the first book in her Loveline series, which is a series of audiobooks that are like completely standalone from each other, but they are like graphic audiobooks. So there's narrators for every single character. There's background music, background noise, sound effects, like everything. So our heroine of the story, she is trying to get her website up and running, but the site that she's using to create her website, like the main site, kind of like think of Wix, kind of. Like, so she's calling up like the main corporate Wix to help with their website because hers isn't working and she needs it launched by a certain time the next day. Anyway, so she's on a customer service call with one of the guys who works there. And I think his name was Cal. They hit it off really well. They are on this phone call for hours where he while he's trying to like fix her website up but then they just talk about anything and everything it's a fairly short book but these two just become like smitten with each other cal is so stinking sweet he has this mirabunctious cat who gets into everything you can like hear him through the phone line um and he's just really 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 sweet if you want a monster romance i have mantras and minotaurs by ashley bennett i think all the books in the series could honestly be categorized um in here with Cinnamon Roll Heroes, especially our monster heroes. All the monster heroes in this series are total Cinnamon Rolls, okay? This one specifically is about Alistar and Pam, um, and it's an older couple romance, so I think both these characters are in their 40s or 50s, if I'm not mistaken. And Pam, I think her husband died a few years ago. Both of her kids have gotten in relationships. They're in their 20s, her kids are. Um, and she's like, I finally want to find a man for myself. So she ends up across Alistair on a dating app. Um, and in this universe, you have humans and monsters that like live together in harmony, right? So monsters exist. Um, and so it's like their romance at first, it starts out at long distance and then it turns into something more, which is really fun. But Alistair, well, like, oh, he's so sweet for Pam and asks about her day every single day and wants to know more about her. Um, and it's just there for her in every way possible. And it's so, Stinking cute. Another monstery one is also an alien romance. This is Gilmat by Honey Phillips. This is the last book in her Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. And a lot of these books fall into this category, but I feel like Gilmat is the most cinnamon roll of them all. So each book in the series uh, takes place on this planet. It's kind of like an ice planet a little bit. Um, there's a village full of humans and a few miles away is a ranch that these like seven brother in arms like own this ranch. And um, Gilmat is our character in here, who is one of those brothers. And one of his other brothers kidnapped a human girl, kidnapped a few human women from this village and just like deposited them at all his brother's doorsteps. Cause that's how he thought that like, people got wives. It's just to kidnap women <laughs> when he knows, like he doesn't know any better. Um, and so during a snowstorm, like Gilmat opens his greenhouse and realizes, oh my gosh, there's this woman in here and he can't like bring her out of his greenhouse um because she would die because it's like storming really hard outside these two end up falling for each other while stuck in this snowstorm gilmat is this plant alien creature who can make things grow which is really really cool um but he's so sweet he is so sweet so kind and the heroine is equally as sweet she's more of the dominant one you could say in this book and another alien one is i married anaga by regine abel this is the second book in her prime dating agency Prime Mating Agency, there you go, Prime Mating Agency series, um, where human women end up getting matched to like alien creatures, kind of like male order brighted. But this one is interesting because our heroine, she is this kind of like hunter on this planet who gets hired to kill um, animals that are overpopulating a planet um, to keep the population low. And so she gets hired on this one planet where a hero is from, he's a Naga creature, so like 
this up is like human body and then down is like a snake tail, whatever. And so he's like the ruler of their village. And when she goes to this planet, the people who are in charge of like eliminating the animals that are being overpopulated, there's just one rule they can't cross a specific boundary because that's where like residents are and they don't want them to get hurt. Um, and they can't kill all of the animals too because they still want animals for them to eat, just like get rid of some of them to stomp like the overpopulation. Anyway, the heroine ends up seeing one of these natives to the planet like become like getting attacked, like the bait, a child getting attacked by a very dangerous animal. And so she crosses that boundary that she's not allowed to in order to save the child's life. But even though she saved a life, she's still in trouble for crossing that boundary. She broke the rules. And so instead of killing her, they have decided she's gonna marry this Naga ruler man. His name is Cesaro and at first he doesn't really know what to do with Serena, our heroine, um, but then he just wants to make her life completely comfortable in his home. He has a nest for her to stay in, like this beautiful home, and he's like we're gonna do everything to make this as comfortable for you. And the one scene that makes me laugh so hard is like he has to create like a whole new shower and bathroom area for her because like that's different than what his people do <laughs> and it, the whole scene was so funny to me but I loved like he literally took everything all his time all of his care to make sure that she was cared for that time I got drunk and needed a love potion out of werewolf is another hilarious one um so our heroine lives in this fantasy realm there's this guy hitting at her at a bar buys her a drink and is like take the drink and she's like no and he keeps being persistent until she throws it in his face the guy ducks and the potion drink, she now knows it's a love potion, ends up getting like splashed onto the guy standing behind him who was this werewolf guy. And the moment that he sees our heroine, he's like smitten. He's like, oh my gosh, you're my fated mate. You're it for me. And she's like, oh no, that's just the love potion talking. Like he, he spiked it with a love potion. Like you're not actually in love with me. But he's like, oh no, but you are my fated mate. <laughs> he's so sick and sweet. He like immediately runs to her house, tries to find her and changes their name on the mailbox to be to like their joint one. He goes and like gets their married on a marriage certificate. Like. <laughs> He's so, so funny. Um, and there's other like sweet caring things he does for a heroine in this one. And lastly, I have an alien romance novella. This is Viridios. This is by L.A. Holloway. And she kind of said that our hero was inspired by Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. So our big tree creature man ends up falling for a scientist who is studying his planet. And she's a human woman. And so there is size difference galore in here. He's so sweet and caring. He wants the best for her. Um, we'll find her little treasures. Like we'll build her a house. He's so sweet. Anyway, so you have it. Those are 10 romances with cinnamon roll heroes. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cinnamon roll emoji in the comment section down below. I think there's a cinnamon roll or like a bread product of some kind. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.